Q&A for post server and everything else. I'm getting silence here. <laughs> I think when I start ordering parts, I'll have specific questions. Okay. Yeah, it looks look, looks like this is going to be a, uh, a thirty second uh, Q and A. Uh, I have one question. So when you're like when you're when you're putting values to the parts, yeah. do you, would you normally put a part number or would you put like for example when you pass you would put like a number or would you put ten and F? Um, it's what you you have to do whatever the 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 parts supplier wants you to do. Okay, so DigiKey has these long part numbers, and they all end, end, end with dash ND. Uh, by the way, ND means no discount. <laughs> Little factoid. Uh, but that's, that's the DigiKey part numbers. Mouser part numbers I like pr prefer because they are a three-digit vendor ID, dash, and then the manufacturer's part number. Okay, so they've got a much more sane and rational part numbering strategy. Uh, Jamco uses just a number, and it's got a single check digit in it, so that they can t t make try and catch single digit uh, errors. Uh, but that's what that's what they've got. Um, so each vendor does their own part numbering. So did that answer your question, or did I just miss entirely? Uh, yeah. Well, I did answer it. Okay. Extending that question, organization parts is a big deal. It is a big deal. Wouldn't, in general, would it be very useful just to have the value of case size? You're using the package size anyway, right? You, you, you want... Not the part number anymore. I always try to get the part number somewhere on there. Uh, I use these... What I do for... I have some clear plastic drawers. You get these 40 or 50 drawer things. You see them all over the place in electronics labs. Uh, I don't see any in here yet. That will probably change. Bitty there are some outside. Little bitty things on the wall that come out. Yeah. And break. Okay. I will print a piece of paper. Okay. And the front lip of that I can see through the, cla the plastic drawer, and that'll be the uh, part uh, side, you know, the 10K resistor or whatever. Then on the bottom of it, I will have the part, the manufacturer's part number, and everything. So if I want to see it, I, I just lift the whole drawer up and look underneath, and I can pick out the, the, the part number that I use. Because what will happen is I will order a part that's sitting there in the drawer, and I say, yeah, that's the part I want. And I get the part number, okay, and then I go to the vendor site, and they, they say, I, we, don't know, we don't even know what you're talking about. They discontinued that part, you know, 18 years ago, okay. Uh, and then sometimes it's still there. Like the, the part that Rohan just used for his power connector is the uh, PA-102. And I've been using that power connector for like 15 years because it's one of the few power connectors that goes through round holes. Most of them require slotted holes. Okay, and slotted holes used to cost extra. So, you know, it's, it's one of these things. I, so I do try and capture the manufacturer's part numbers. For DigiKey, what I do is I take their labels and I shove them at the bottom of the drawer. Okay, so I, I, I at least know what's going on. The other thing I do is if I have through hole parts that match a surface mount part number and it's cut tape, I just cut the tape up and put them in the same drawer as the through holes. But managing parts is, you know, we all struggle with it. And um, when you screw up, your board doesn't work. <laughs> you, you put the wrong component in there, it either blows up or it just doesn't work. Do you know what manufacturers do? Uh, you mean what really, you know, uh, companies that do volume production, use pick and place machines, everything's reel based and they have shelf upon shelf of reels of tape, okay? And for the common components like resistors, they just care about the value uh, and they don't, they don't really care where, which manufacturers. They'll just they'll take a reel off, shove it on, and, and away they go. The um, for everybody else, uh, they have to be very careful. Uh, I believe I read somewhere that Seed Studio, which does manufacturing as well, a significant percentage of their um, employees are 
basically dealing with uh, supply chain issues, which is basically ordering parts, managing the parts, and making sure the right parts get put on the right boards. Okay, so I mean, the, the, this this logistics management is not, you know, it's everybody has to deal with it. Um, and you know, what really hurts is when you look at a reel of you know resistors, you know, five thousand of them. You say, look at all the wasted paper and reel <laughs> and all that. It's literally, you know, well under uh, a thimbleful of parts that are that are that are you know, you know, it's just you know, massive overkill. It's just because you know we are so much bigger than the part, and we have to size our, our logistics so that they're human handleable, you know, they can be handled by humans. High end pick and place machines have a very dense packing capability that I don't fully understand yet. It's not they do. Do not always use reels. They have these special things. They're like, Pez, you know, if you remember the old Pez uh, uh, containers, um, the uh, I think it's more of a, that style of a, a, a dispenser. But um, but most of the, most of the industry is still using uh, you know, tape on reel hmm. for now you know, until until it changes. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next class is going to be the beginning of um, actually soldering. So boards will be showing up and we'll start soldering. Cool. Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to call this a wrap.